everyone. Welcome to Counting on Math. In this video series, we'll be examining some common math strategies that kids are using in their classrooms. As we all know, math classrooms today look very different from when we were in school. And sometimes parents feel a bit lost when helping their kids with their math schoolwork. Our goal is to help you interpret and understand some of these newer math strategies, as well as the purposes behind them, so that you, in turn, can help your kids become successful mathematicians. We hope these videos provide some insight for you. Enjoy! If you have kids in school, you're probably seeing them using some new and pretty unfamiliar addition strategies in their math classrooms. And you're probably thinking, what is the point of this? It takes a lot longer, it takes more paper, so why can't they just add the way that we learned when we were in school? Today I'd like to help you get a little more familiar with some of these strategies that your students might be doing at school and provide some insight as to why things look so differently in today's math classrooms. First, let's start with the traditional method of adding that most of us are familiar with. I'll add the numbers 267 plus 165. Okay, so to solve this, I know the first thing I need to do is to start on the right side of the numbers, the right side of the equation. 7 plus 5 equals 12. So I'll write a 2 here. And I need to remember to carry the 1, as it used to be called, into the tens place. Then I know that 6 plus 6 equals 12. I have to remember to add that 1, which equals 13. I'll write a 3 here. Carry a 1 again. And lastly, I can add 2 plus 1, which is 3. Remember to add that one up here, which makes 4. All right, so we know our answer is 432. So I did that pretty fast because I've memorized all the steps to follow. For those of us who are familiar with this, it's a pretty quick process. But let's go over all of those steps that we followed here in order to solve this problem this way. The first thing I had to do was to remember to line up these digits. I needed to remember to keep the ones place together, the tens place together, and the hundreds place together. That's really important. So the second thing that I had to remember to do was to start on the right with these digits right here. This can be a little bit tricky for kids to remember because we actually will read from left to right. We're telling them to add from right to left. Okay, another thing I had to remember to do in order to get this problem right was to carry the one in the tens place and the hundreds place. That's what we used to call it. We know now that that's not the best thing to call it and I'll talk about that some more later. The last thing I had to remember to do was to add these ones up here into my final answer. So even though this process is pretty familiar to most of us, we had to learn it at some point and there were actually a lot of steps for us to memorize. So the question is, is there a time or a place for learning this method? Should we be teaching it at all? And the answer is yes. There's definitely a time and a place for teaching this skill and learning this skill. However, when you get right down to it, this algorithm and its process is actually a shortcut. They're just designed to be rules that work for convenience sake. But this is why kids need to be taught why these things work, and not just the rules by themselves. So to answer the question of why, we try to give kids a number of strategies that actually show the values behind these digits and give some meaning to the process of addition. These are taught first before the traditional algorithm that I showed you in order to build what we call number sense. This is the foundation of what kids need. So here's a learning standard found in one of your state standards, Common Core, Text, Standards of Learning, and so forth, that your child's teacher might be using as the foundation of one of his or her lessons. This says that students must be able to add and subtract within 1,000, which means three-digit numbers, up to 999, 
using concrete models or drawings and strategies based on place value, properties of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. So before they learn the algorithm that you and I just solved together, they need a strong foundation of what these numbers mean and what adding them means. They'll start by adding these concrete models or drawings that look like this. They might be adding with blocks like this called base 10 blocks or they might be adding on a number line like this. So again, this is to build a foundation of what adding really means with visual support. After they've mastered that, they'll begin solving with numerals and digits. So let's return to the very first equation that we started with. Each of these numbers is written as a three-digit number. What we need kids to understand is that they are not simply digits alone. For example, the 2 in this number is not simply a 2. It actually represents 200. The 6 represents 60 and the 7 represents 7. This is all according to the digits place or position within the number. So since kids are still building their number sense skills, we want them to show these values when they're adding at an early stage like this. 267 has a value of 200 plus 60 plus 7. And the number 165 has a value of 100 plus 60 plus 5. Now, kids have learned at this point that adding means combining, and they've done this with concrete objects already. Intuitively, they may want to add similar numbers starting on the left, which is really fine for this stage. So, I'll do that here. We know that 200 plus 100 equals 300. We also know that 60 plus 60 equals 120, and 7 plus 5 equals 12. Okay, so at this point, some kids may be able to add mentally, but again, we want to show the meaning behind each of these digits. So for the sake of demonstrating that meaning, we'll break this apart further to show the values of each digit. I'm going to leave 300 the same and write it here. And then I can break apart the value of 120 into 100, and then 20. And lastly, I can break apart 12 into 10 and 2. Okay, so now we have everything spelled out for us by place value. I'm going to use that place value to combine similar numbers again. So we're going to start with 300 and 100, which are both hundreds. Together that makes 400. Okay, then I'm going to combine my tens, 20 and 10, which makes 30. And I have a 2 left over, which I will write here. So my final answer has a value of 400 plus 30 plus 2. Now we can write this in standard form using one digit for each place, 432. Okay, so that took a lot of steps. And it will take a lot of lines on your paper. And yes, your child's teacher or your state test might require a really in-depth strategy like this one. But let me assure you, it is an excellent foundation for strengthening your child's number sense skills. It's not going to be forever, and it has huge benefits toward future math success. So let's look at the connection between the old way that we did this and this new way here. Hopefully I can answer your question of why 
we did it this way at all. So remember how in this strategy up here, we had to line up these values by place value? Well, when we do it this way, we see why. We group the hundreds and the tens and the ones, and kids will see that that'll make their lives much easier if they keep those place values together. Another thing we had to do when we solved the old way was to carry the ones, as we used to call it. Well, we don't call it carrying anymore. We call it regrouping. And the purpose of this is because it's not really a one that we put in the tens place or in the hundreds place. It's a 10 in the tens place and a 100 in the hundreds place. And let me show you where that is in our new strategy. We showed the value here and we showed the value here. When you point this out to kids, they begin to see the connection. Why they have to remember that one, which is actually a 10 or actually a 100, when they are entering their final answer. And also what goes hand in hand with this is the whole purpose for starting with the ones place. If you have to regroup like we did up here, it's a lot easier to do if you started here and moved to the left. Going from right to left will show kids that they can regroup along the way. Okay, so you might see a couple of other strategies being taught in the classrooms. Um, all of these are going to be really good as long as they are developing their number sense along the way. Let me show you one where kids are still showing the values as they go, but it's taking fewer steps than what we did before. And here's another one. In this strategy, they're actually changing the number to a similar number that's easier to work with. They added one, and then they solved the problem, and then they subtracted that one for their final answer. This is more of a mental math strategy that's awesome that you might use at the grocery store, you're doing some party planning, something where you don't have a pencil and paper right there with you. However, it does involve a lot of number sense, so make sure that they're building that foundation first. So with all of these strategies that I've just shown you, the most important thing is that we are building an understanding of why these algorithms work the way they do. The main purpose behind all of these strategies is, once again, number sense. We're building a strong foundation that will allow students to understand the shortcuts and the abstract calculations they'll do later on. All of it is important, but it has to be taught in the right order and with the right guidance. Thanks for watching.